We still have to prove the running time of the algorithm. But before we do that, I want to show you that Schnuder realizes and canonical orders, they are not that different. In fact, if we have a Schnuder realizer, then we can extract a canonical order from it. So look at this example here. We will only look at the red tree for now. And we will add these two edges on the outer face also directed to A. And now we want to do a pre-order traversal on this red tree. And in particular, we want to do a counterclockwise one. So we start here. We take this vertex next, we go back, we go to this vertex, here, 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 go back, go here, and so on. So we walk around this tree with a pre-order traversal and we assign the numbers according to this traversal. And if we do that, then we have a canonical order. And Actually, we can do that for any of these trees. So we can also reuse the green tree, do a counterclockwise pre-order traversal, and we have another canonical order. And we can do it for the blue. And this gives us another canonical order. You can also choose to go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So for every Schnuder realizer we have, we can get a bunch of different canonical orders but we can get at least three different ones. But we can also go the other direction. Let's say we have a canonical order, we can calculate a Schnuder realizer from it. And for that, we will just start with the last vertex of the canonical order. And in the canonical order, we remove it. We get a leftmost edge, a rightmost edge, and some middle edges. And we will color this one red, this one blue, and all the others green. And this is directed downwards, and these are directed upwards. So like this. And then we continue. We take the next vertex. The left and rightmost will be red and blue outgoing, and the others green incoming. Continue with that. We color it red, green, blue, red, blue red, green, blue, and so on. We walk through the canonical order, and if we do that at every step, then in the end, we also will have a Schnuder realizer of this graph. So every Schnuder realizer induces a bunch of canonical orders, and a canonical order also induces a unique Schnuder realizer that we can compute for it. And there was one hole so far, we didn't prove how to do the linear running time for the contraction algorithm to get the Schnuder realizer, that you only do in the exercise. But actually we don't even need this. With this part here, we can just start with the canonical order and from this canonical order compute the Schnuder realizer. However, there's one more thing we have to do. We have to calculate for every vertex what is the number of vertices in every region and what is the number of vertices on these paths. If we do that naively for every vertex, then we get quadratic running time. But we can be a bit smarter by doing some pre-processing. Well, let's look at the green tree. If we traverse the tree in some order, then we can easily find out what is the length of the path from V to the root, because that's just the depth of the vertex. But we can also easily find the number of vertices in here. So we want to compute the number of vertices here, but also we want to find out how many vertices lie in the subtree that's rooted in V. With a post order, that's very easy. So when you get here, you start counting and at every parent you add up the count of the two children and then every vertex will know the weight of its subtree. That's pretty easy. Now, when we want to compute this here, what do we have to do? We have to figure out how many vertices are inside here and on these two paths. Now we only want to have a look at the vertices on this path. 
each of those again has some subtree, but it knows how many vertices are in the subtree. So in order to calculate this number, the only thing we have to do is we have to look at all the vertices on this path and ask it how many vertices are in your subtree. Then we ask all the vertices on this path how many vertices are in your subtree. And then we have to remove again all the vertices that are in the subtree of V because we counted it twice, once for this path and once for this. And once we've done that, we found all the numbers that we need to calculate this. The thing is that doing this still requires too much time. But we can be even smarter. So for this vertex, instead of only remembering how many vertices are in my subtree, we can remember the whole sum here. We can remember how many vertices lie in this plus this plus this plus this subtree. And then when we get here, we only have to ask it, hey, what was the sum? We get it. And then we save the sum of everything on this path here. So with a total number of six tree traversals, we can compute all these sums. And every tree traversal takes linear time. We have to do six of those, so we take linear time in total. And that's how we get our theorem that we can compute this grid drawing in order of n time. Thank you for watching.